Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, today we're going to change out a compressor uh, over in Rancho Cordova and I just kind of thought that I would bring you along with me and uh, just kind of check it out see what kind of trouble I can get into. Alright, stay tuned. So we're coming over to check out a friend's um, AC system. Pretty cool day out today right now. Um, but uh, they said they were having issues with their compressor. Said somebody had told them that they have a bad compressor. Um, I come out here and fire up the system and the compressor's running. Uh, it just looks like it's really low on refrigerant. So uh, I think we have more, I think we have more issues to look at than just um, just the compressor the fan is running at 0 0.8 which is great and the compressor is running at like 4.5 uh, and the RLA is like 12 so 12.8 so on a hotter day uh, we would like to see that higher than that but it's low on refrigerant and they said that they had issues with low refrigerant before so uh, I think we're going to look at that. Okay so um, you know pressures are low we're, we're at around uh, 20 degrees. We're around uh, 15 degrees at the evap coil and uh, 50 degrees on the outside. It is pretty chilly out. I mean, it's pretty cool out right now. It's actually right around 55 degrees outside. So I can get a charge on it. What I'm looking for is uh, around 30 to 40 degrees on the evap coil. And definitely uh, I'd like to get a, a cold suction line see where our, pre our high side pressures end up but there's definitely a leak here and we've got to find that as well so the goal for today is to come out and get them charged up because uh, tomorrow is supposed to be like 80 and then this weekend is supposed to be like 90 95 degrees out so we're going to get the pressures up get them cooling and in the meantime we'll start the uh, process of the leak search so So I think they're about three to five pounds low. Uh, we'll see what my guess is. The system holds uh, 99 ounces, which is about 6.3 pounds. So we'll see if I'm right. Okay, so we can see we're at about, ooh, I don't know if you can see there or not. We're, there we go, two pounds in of the uh, R410. Pressures have gone up. We're around 25 degrees right now. We're gonna let the pressures kind of just equalize in the system. Still pretty cool. Uh, we'll probably add another pound here, see where we're at. Got about, a, got about a 17 degree split right now. 
inside. I'd like to get a little bit higher than that. Airflow is good on the inside. We're at about four pounds in, about four pounds in right now. Pretty cool in the house right now. So when I'm looking for the leak, I'm I'm looking for oil. So this <clears throat> this system has already been charged up before with a refrigerant leak. So usually when you have a leak on the outdoor or on one of the coils, you'll have a a streak. You'll see a dark streak going through here, you know, or something like that. Uh, also, you'll see oil start to accumulate. Because as the refrigerant is going through the system, it carries oil with it. And this oil will start spewing out of the hole. Um, if I can't find the leak with my leak sniffer, uh, this guy right here, then, then I'll go through the system with some dye. I'll insert some dye into the system and let it circulate throughout the system eventually if the system continues to leak the dye will spew out of the hole um, that the leak is at so so i'm gonna go through and just kind of sniff through here and see if i can find anything and we'll go through the evap coil and see if we can find anything there uh, i mean clearly i don't see any streaks or oil anywhere here but they said that the homeowner said that the last time that they had a uh, a leak it was out here at the condenser coil so I just don't feel any oil anywhere. Okay, so we've done the leak search and we've gone through, I've done the evap coil and the, um, uh, ev the evaporator coil and the condenser coil and I can't find anything with my snipper. So now I'm gonna ins insert some dye into the into the suction line. So this is pretty easy, pretty easy to do. You know, make sure that's all the way on, and then just screw this bolt down. We'll start seeing the plunger come down.
you know, too little might be a problem. Too much, uh, I don't think, could be a problem. So uh, they say about one line for every ton. About you know, two of these lines here for every ton. So with the uh, two and a half ton system we got, I just went ahead and went down about three, three sets of lines. So we're gonna let this circulate for a couple months, and we're gonna come back and look for the search, look for the leak. Um, maybe I'll find it. It's gotta come out eventually. There's a hole somewhere, and the uh, the die here will eventually find the hole and start, you know, start spitting out of there. And I'll go in with my yellow glasses and my UV light, and we'll. Uh, illuminate this die and we'll find it somewhere. We'll either find it in the condenser coil, in the evap coil, or the line set that runs in between. I'll put my light up, my glasses on, and my, my UV light, and we'll shine it around. And wherever the leak is, it'll light up, it'll illuminate just like a crime scene. So, right now, there's obviously some right here. So, if I put my glasses on and my light, you would see that this is all illuminated right here. But uh, kind of where we're at right now, you just got to be patient with leak searches, things like that. You know, it's not always going to show itself uh, every time, which is why you need to charge enough to, come, you know, for coming back out. We may come out two, three times to look for this leak until we find it and topping off the refrigerant each time. So. All right, well, the uh, most important thing was that we got them up and running. And uh, so over the next few days, when it does get hot, because um, it is gonna get hot here real soon, um, at least they'll be cooling. In the meantime, the dye is in the system, doing its work, circulating through the system, being carried along through the system by the oil and the compressor, pumping it through, cycling, cycling, uh, eventually it will find eventually it will find the hole that die will find the hole that it's spewing out of that the refrigerant is coming out of <coughs> and um, we'll find the leak so uh, if you couldn't find the leak somehow for some reason through the die in the system then the next thing to do is to do a leak isolation test in, uh, in which we would separate the evap coil, the line set, and the condenser coil, put pressure ports on all of them, and uh, service ports as well, and literally pump each line up, all three units, like the evap coil would just get its, you know, 500 PSI or 400 PSI, and you'd mark it uh, on the, with a gauge and a straighter port. And the, you do the same thing with the with the line set that runs in between. And then you would do the same with the condenser coil on the outside. That way you can find, uh, okay, well, which now eventually the, uh, you know, once you pump it up, the, uh, the air would eventually come out of either the condenser coil or the line set or the evap coil. And then you would know what needs to be replaced so um, I haven't had to do that actually in, uh, in in seven years of HVAC I personally haven't had to do an HVAC leak isolation yet I've come really close to it um, but uh, but we have found the leak and so that's um, you know that has prevented us from having to um, Know, come back in the fall or winter when they don't need air conditioning anymore and actually spend the time to pump all three sections of the line up to find out where the leak is but that is it's an option and it can be done so um, it's it's pricey for the customer but that's where it is so okay guys well um, thank you for watching I appreciate it